오늘 대학교에서 불러준 곡에 영국 영국 곡이 Today, let's finish with the case study of L'Oreal. So, last time we were discussing about L'Oreal. <coughs> so, I think we finished with uh, fame by association. So, the next part is marketing as recruiting. this part, marketing as recruiting. Yes, what's the important point here? So it's a type of marketing where it involves a competition with where students come up with ideas or concepts uh, of uh, type of the real brand, brands. They came up with what? Uh, marketing plan or concept. For what? For uh, uh, L'Oreal brands. This can identify uh, the talents that would allow L'Oreal to continue to excel in the future marketing. So the companies want to hire the best workers, right? Yeah. So if they hold a student competition, they could find some talent. Do you understand talent? Yeah. Uh, then from print to digital. So their digital marketing. So who read this part? Yes. What can you tell us about their digital marketing? Avatar is like an online uh, picture of you, right? So you could make an avatar in the store, and then you could see yourself on the internet and try on makeup and clothes on the internet, on your body, on your avatar. Do you understand that idea? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Shopper, shopper use the avatar to try on makeup and clothes. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the sort of changing room by multiple applications of skincare product for cosmetics. Okay, so they have a website. Okay, and on their website, it has uh, asked for input and views, right? People can upload sample samples. So we call that interactive. Okay? So you can upload samples, for example. What about their YouTube and Facebook? What's special about the YouTube and Facebook? How to be a beauty product? What's that? What? 
YouTube or Facebook? YouTube. So YouTube, what did they have? They have beauty bloggers. Do you understand beauty bloggers? Do you watch YouTube? Yes. Do you watch beauty bloggers? No. Why not? <laughs> hmm? Don't watch the beauty. Do you watch beauty bloggers on YouTube? Who do you watch? Huh? You don't know the name? So, these days companies have to find other ways to reach people, okay? Some people is not watching TV, other people especially are watching YouTube. So some, they have the YouTube blogger or sensation who has a lot of viewers, right? And then they can say, give the tip, like, oh, this L'Oreal eyeliner is very good, <laughs> right? Just by accident, I found this L'Oreal eyeliner. I can recommend it to you, okay? But actually, they're getting paid money to say that kind of thing, right? Or they get the free equipment. So they have those kind of beauty bloggers. Makes a sense of community. So, web personality here, they write down Michel Pan. Do you know Michel Pan? Who is a web, uh, web personality that you know? Do you know any web personalities? On YouTube? No? Famous people that you watch? Okay. So this is, for example, is a 20-year-old Vietnamese American blogger. And she seems very authentic, right? Like people think she's just giving the tip. Right? Uh, in Korea, my wife was watching some TV programs, Get It Beauty. Then she spent a lot of money on <laughs> makeup and other things. So I told her, hey, did you know they're just getting paid to tell you that that's a good product? They don't really think that they didn't choose the product themselves. And then she stopped buying it after I told her that. Right? So sometimes people don't realize, right, the beauty expert is getting paid. They're not really, they say, oh, the seaweed face mask is great. Makes me look 10 years younger, right? <laughs> and my wife was a neighbor, oh, seaweed mask. Why is all the seaweed mask, right? Well, actually, they're getting paid money to say that the seaweed mask is very good, right? You look very sad. Is that news for you, too? They're getting paid? <laughs> Were you buying things from Get a Beauty? <laughs> hmm? Were you? <laughs> no. Okay, so it's the same on YouTube, but a lot of people don't realize that the YouTube personality is getting paid money. Right? So it's a new way for the company to reach the people. Okay? If people is not watching the advertisement on TV. Then what about the Facebook? What did they do on Facebook? <coughs> Okay, so they helped a lot of saloons. They helped the saloon to make the Facebook page, right? The saloon are professional. Do you understand the saloon? Yes. Right? They helped them to make the Facebook page. Of course, L'Oreal is going to put in some of their videos. Right? Instructional videos on the web page. So I'll help you to make your web page, okay? So all of the hair saloons have the web page, you have to buy L'Oreal. But in return you have to put in some of my instructional videos. Do you understand the instructional video? Another way of advertising, like this is how you color your hair, right? By yourself. But what product are they going to have in the background? Hmm? L'Oreal hair color, right? In the background. And just instructional video. Do you like instructional videos? Right, so that's another way companies can get some traffic for their website. They make an instructional video. For example, you're working in the garage, selling cars, or repairing the car. You make an instructional video about how to change the tire, right? Or how to change the spark plug. Then the people watch the instructional video, and then they can go to your website and that kind of thing. Okay. You understand instructional videos? Yeah. Okay, so 
And the last part is reaching the next billion customers. So, who read that part? Who read reaching the next billion customers? The conclusion? So we can just, it's just quite short, so look, we can look at it. L'Oreal aims to double its consumer base to 2 billion, it is 1 billion, so 2 billion. So they want to increase the emerging markets. So emerging markets is currently 30% of sales, revenues <coughs> is in emerging markets. Okay, so they want to increase their revenues to 50%. Okay, so it's currently 30%, they want to increase to 50%. So, you can see the last uh, sentence from the CEO, that they need size, but they also need, as well as size, they need the innovation, creativity, that kind of thing, taste, okay, that kind of thing. So, then we've written down all of the data, so let's just briefly look at the... Uh, graphics and tables. At the end of the case there is some gra graphic and table tables. So we've looked So you can get an, an idea here of the kind of tables that you can put in when you're doing your marketing plan. Okay? For example, if you're selling cosmetics, this is going to be important to economic information. Okay? GDP growth and per capita cosmetics consumption. Do you understand per capita cosmetics consumption? Okay? How much do people spend per capita on cosmetics? So and GDP growth, how fast is the economy growing? We could also have GDP per capita, okay? But we, we already kind of have that because we have per capita cosmetics consumption. Okay, so uh, <coughs> the yellow line is per capita GDP in thousands of US dollars, this yellow dot, and per capita cosmetics consumption in US dollars is the uh, purple line. Okay, so we can see that countries like uh, have the high GDP, like Switzerland, uh, United States, and so on. Okay. Mm. Also, we we look at the high cosmetics consumption here. Philippines not not as much. Norway, Switzerland higher. Okay, so where do I want to sell cosmetics? Country which has both high GDP and high cosmetics consumption. Right? So it's going to be up on this corner, not on this corner. Too high. Right? Norway, Switzerland, Japan. Okay? Then down here, India, low GDP and low consumption of cosmetics, right? China. So currently that's where we said that 70% of L'Oreal's revenue is in developed economies. 70% of their revenue is here. But they're expecting these countries, Brazil, Russia, China, okay, Mexico in the black, they're expecting those countries to grow a lot and move up this way. So they'll need to spend more here, right? The trend is they're growing. So if you make that kind of table for your marketing plan, it's good, right, for your product. How much are people spending on that kind of product in the different countries? Uh, here's their sales or revenues by region. So the percentage, we can look at the percentage of sales here. Western Europe, 35%. North America, 36%. So Western Europe and North America is their main, where they get their sales from. New markets. OK? 
Okay, that's professional products and also similar for consumer products and luxury products. So here we have some graphic about the tailored product to each region of the world, right? Uh, Garnier is the affordable brand, the ch cheaper one, okay? So they have different one for each country in the world. So let's look at Mexico. They have Fructis Stop Kaida hair, hair Care in Mexico, okay? Uh, number two, in Western Europe, they have this one. Uh, shampoo for color treated hair, because a lot of people dye their hair in Europe, right? Uh, then mineral deodorant launched in Eastern Europe, specifically for Eastern Europe here. Caffeine eye roll-on in Asia. So roll-on eye thing, right? And Garnier Men for India, skincare range. So they make this product just specifically for each country. <clears throat> then they we look at their channels. They have the professional channel, right? Food and drugs, <coughs> department stores, pharmacies, body shop. So different brand on different channel. So just we can see some information on the graphs. So what we, we should do now is analyze. We wrote down the information. So we need to analyze the information. So you have your case study. So what this case is an evaluation case, not so much a problem case. So there are some parts which are not that relevant in this case. So for example, <coughs> uh, we don't need to do the action points at the end. Right? So there's three main boxes that are important. that we need to uh, fill in. So we have, we have the problem, the questions we asked at the start, the data, and the analysis. Okay. So the result of our analysis. So we're not really dealing with a problem here, we're just evaluating. <coughs> so we have three questions that we said we would ask. Let's write down the questions. And this is like the analysis, right? So what you should have written down in the problem, what is Maria doing? Okay, that's the first one, analysis. Then the next one is how is it doing it? And then the last one is what is the trade-off? So discuss, so look back at the notes that you took, the information that you took, and now discuss those questions with your partner. Then we'll discuss as a class. So first discuss the questions with your partner. Uh, it's not good for, uh, it's not good for 
other one, uh, other sector, other parts, they, they won't sell other parts in those markets. Then you have your analysis. So if you want, you can write on the page. If not, you can make three sections, like one problem. Problem is those three questions, right? Two, the important or key data. Okay, important data that you wrote down from the case. And three, analysis. Okay, analysis is going to be solving problems. So we are questions, right? So if you want, you can write on the page that I gave you. Otherwise, you can just make any page and write these three points. Okay. What is important? When we analyze the case, we know what the question or problem is first. Then we find the key data, which is only which is relevant to the to these, right? And then we analyze the data. Okay. So we can answer the question. So what I'm asking you to do now is look back at the data. You took some. No you should have taken the notes in the last class, right? Look back at the data and make an analysis, answer the questions. Do you understand the task? Is there something else they're giving up? Hmm? 
Let's discuss the first question. So what is L'Oreal doing? So who can tell me what's L'Oreal's strategy or what are they doing? Here, strategy is like lo localization, right? Localization or customization. Geo cosmetics. Geo cosmetics. <coughs> Under this, we have the geo cosmetics. Uh, maybe here, I think. You mean they have the R and D in each country? Yeah. So this is how they're doing it, right? Anything else at the start for their strategy? They have a localization strategy. What other kind of strategy do they have? Dividing their uh, friends into into what? Uh, high income, middle, and low. Okay. So there's diversity of brands. So the brand is not so much. They're making some segment for income, right? Yeah. Any other? Strategy at the start. <coughs> Innovation, right? Anything else? 
Acquiring companies. So they are getting the local taste by acquiring companies. Acquiring local companies. <coughs> so we forgot one here, the emerging markets. Is a big one, right? Okay, and then they also have a quality global brand. So L'Oreal's advantage over some of the local brands is they have a global brand, right? A strong global brand. So they're keeping their brand like Garnier or that kind of thing, right? But changing the brand for changing the product. For the, so the packaging and the branding may be the same, right? But all of this changed. Okay, so then discuss with your partner more. We discussed about this here, we already wrote down some answers, but these kind of things, right? How is it doing? Okay, so how is it making the strategy for emerging markets or innovation, that kind of thing? They can sell their products to the customers of their own. with the education programs for the hairdressers, hairdressers. Okay, so they're making some, uh, making a relationship with 
professionals and students, right? <coughs> so we saw that in Brazil, right? Yes. Where did they have the competition? You said they had the competition. What country was that in? Uh, in Brazil. Brazil? Professionals and student, right? Yes. For the HR. So they're trying to make relationship with the people. Okay. Anything else? Focusing on the online marketing. So online marketing, digital advertising. Okay. So we, we, we talked about that. Uh, again, it's linked to making the relationships on Facebook. Okay, or finding the beauty blogger in the different countries. Okay, and using the avatar for the people, that kind of thing. Okay, and the bloggers. Okay, what did you say? Investing heavily in advertising. So, in the emerging markets, L'Oreal's advantage may be that they have more money to spend on advertising, so they can put on the TV ads related to the quality global brand. Okay. Anything else? And also focus, focusing not, not only in size, but also in quality. Focusing on quality, so like this one, the Geo Cosmetics, similar to that. Yeah. Research and development for the quality local product. Right? Anything else? We mentioned the celebrities, celebrity endorsements, different celebrities for different income segments, different brands, right? So some for the for the expensive brands, different celebrity, right? Maybe for the Garnier, they have the more fun or younger celebrity on the different brands. So uh, this one here, the dividing the brand, they have the strict control of the brands, so that they don't, the brands don't mix, right? So we, we have Garnier, like one brand, and Laurier, another brand. So the brands don't mix over. Strict control of the brand, and then we have centralized control of brands. So it means that the brand, the packaging, and type of advertising may be similar. So, we're making the global brand and just adapting the product. So, then the next question to discuss with your partner is what are the trade-offs? So this is what L'Oreal is doing. They're trying to customize the product. They're clearly divide, trying to divide, have different brands, different segments. They're doing a lot of innovation. Okay? They're starting to focus on the emerging markets more. Right? So what is the trade-off? If they do that, what's the trade-off? What are they losing by making those decisions? What could they be losing? What's the negative point of making different brands for different income segments? What's the negative point of localizing? What's the negative point of constantly innovating? Right? Let's try to think of some negative points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
segments, then there may be their image for the brand is not Maybe they can lose focus on which they which they should be more, more concentrating on. to localize it's going to be co cost more right because we don't have economies of scale as much if we just made the same shampoo up for every country okay or the same makeup for every country we could have economies of scale okay but if we make the R&D and make a new product for every country it's going to cost more okay any other trade-off Maybe for the innovation, because uh, if they innovate their uh, their items too often, maybe they are shortening their already made items longevity. Okay, so innovation. If they it needs to be the innovation needs to be useful, right? Because otherwise, people won't change to the new product. Okay, so people may not change. And also, you mentioned if we we're constantly innovating, we could have too many products. People could be confused. We're constantly changing the product. Okay, so we have to be careful about that. Okay, any other trade off? It takes a lot of time for RD to like research <coughs> into the local markets and find the so this is cost more time and money. Okay, anything else? What about dividing the brand into different income segments? What's the trade-off there? Maybe their images for the for the whole whole brand they can be mixed up. Yes, yeah, so we have to try and keep, they have to need, need to keep the brand separate because otherwise, if they can't keep the brand separate, then the luxury brand is going to suffer, right? If people realize that the uh, same company is making a very cheap product, okay, then the luxury brand name can go down. 
So they need to make sure that they keep the brand very separately. The cost of, uh, the cost of, uh, the cost of for advertising. Cost of advertising, right? R and D mm -hmm. and advertising. Make the global brand. Okay. So sum up. We can see that, just like we mentioned about Pepsi at the start of the company, this is a fast-moving consumer packaged goods, right? So it's the consumer packaged goods industry is quite competitive. So in this industry, we need to understand the local customers, right? And their taste. So we need to have local customer understanding and also adapt the product for the taste of the local customers. But at the same time, so we can, because we understand the customers, we can make new products and we can get an advantage. L'Oreal actually got an advantage. Some product they developed in India, they were able to sell in the rest of the world, right? We can even get an advantage that way. <coughs> but also it's an advantage to have the global brand. Having the quality global brand helps to sell the product. Okay, that it's recognized as quality and it's recognized as a global brand. So you mentioned before about in China with the cars, right? If the Chinese company makes a joint venture with Hyundai or Kia, they get the advantage of global brand. Okay? People think that's quality because it's a global brand. So also we can see here digital marketing is important to uh, make the relationship with the people and the younger generation. Okay? So do you have any co other comment or question about the case study? So then you need to hand in uh, this week, maybe is the midterm week. So then next week is midterm week two. So you can hand in uh, after two and a half weeks, Friday after two and a half weeks, okay, after the midterms are finished. Just write problem, key date, the important data, and your analysis, okay? then hand in to me with your name. You can hand in any time you want, but the deadline is, uh, today is the 20th, so the 6th of May is the deadline for handing in the case study. Okay? Friday the 6th of May. Friday the 6th of May. Okay? So any more questions? Yes? How long is the report has to be? How long is the case study? It's, it's got, it shouldn't be more than a page, A4 page long. Right? Just a few, a few paragraphs for each part. The question is simple, then just the date, information is going to be longer, and then the analysis. So more, no more than one page. Okay, so then let's take a break now for 10 minutes.